Hey YouTube, what's up? Uh, I know what you're thinking. Oh my god, he's wearing a blue shirt. That's not black. But I will tell you, rest assured, this is also a black shirt. Hey there, it's Grixon. Doing all kinds of things. Hey there, it's Grix at school. Playing all kinds of games. Pokemon and Magic the Gathering. Come on down for all kinds of wild things. Alright, so it's Tuesday. That means we're going to play some Magic the Gathering Arena. Uh, so the historic queue has been temporarily removed. So I can't play ranked historic. So what I'm doing now uh, for the time being is I'm playing ranked standard again. Um, it's not quite as fun, but it's a thing and I'm doing it. So this is the deck that we're playing with today. Uh, we're doing best of one standard. Um, and the deck I'm playing is mono black devotion. It is inspired by a list that a friend of mine put together that she sent to me um, that I thought looked really fun, so I decided to tweak a couple things and do my own take on it. So really the plan here is we're trying to amass devotion and then win via Grey Merchant of Asphodel, from here on out referred to as Gary. Uh, what Gary does is when he enters a battlefield he checks your devotion to black um, and then you gain X life and you lose X life or you gain X life, your opponent loses X life, X is that devotion. Uh, your devotion is each black mana symbol in the mana cost of permanents you control. Those count towards your black devotion. So with that in mind, let's take a look at what the deck is. We've got Forever Young, put any number of creatures from your graveyard on top of your library, you draw a card. That's to recycle Gary. Um, we have Timoret, chosen from death. Death? Timoret? 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 His toughness is equal to your devotion to black, and you can exile cards from graveyards. If you're exiling creatures, you're gaining life, which is super sweet. Uh, kind of keeps up that momentum, um, the tempo, so that you don't lose out to aggro lists. Uh, also, the devotion uh, toughness is really nice, because as we start building our devotion, we're going to get a really fat timeret. Um, so that is awesome. Let's move on to Yarok's Fen, Lur Fen Lurker. This is a 1-1 one, one that pumps for three, uh, but what it's really doing is it's entering the battlefield, each opponent exiles a card from their hand, so you're doing some of that hand control uh, while also getting two black devotion because you'll notice it is a double black to cast it. We have Ayara, first of Loch Twain. Um, she's triple black, all three are black symbols, so we're gaining more devotion. Um, this is to gain yourself some life, make your opponent bleed a little bit, and then later in the game it lets you sack your little dudes to gain life, or to draw cards. For boarding fruit, draw two cards, lose two life, uh, make a food if you spend only black. Uh, this is interesting because you can target your opponent, so your opponent can draw two cards and lose two life. Um, and you'll see why that's important when we get to Underworld Dreams. Murderous Rider, it's pretty straightforward removal. Um, Underworld Dreams, whenever an opponent draws a card, they take one damage. Uh, so this is an enchantment that's giving you three black to your devotion. Um, and then let's go back to Forboding Fruit. If you control an Underworld Dreams, your opponent loses two one life per card that they draw. So they draw two, they lose two from the fruit. And then for every Underworld Dreams you control, they're going to lose another two life. So if you have two Underworld Dreams and you target them with fruit, they are taking six damage. Um, so Forboding Fruit ends up actually being a win condition in the later game. Uh, Drag to the Underworld, this is removal that gets cheaper for your devotion. Um, Ill-gotten inheritance. This is a, this is a tempo play. It's to gain you life on your upkeep while you bleed out your opponent, um, and then you can sacrifice it to deal four damage to them and gain four life. Uh, so it can also be a win condition in the later game while being a stabilizer in the early game. Revenge of Ravens. Uh, this is to keep the aggro at bay. It is again. Um, it keeps that tempo up where you're gaining life and your opponent's losing life. So you're bleeding them, going towards your win condition, and you're gaining life to stay long enough to get to your win condition. A ritual of suit. Board wipe. Uh, Cavalier of Night. Um, I like this because of the lifelink, and I like it because of the triple black in the mana cost to get more of that devotion. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, you may sacrifice one of your own creatures to destroy an opponent's creature, and when it dies, you can return a creature from your graveyard with mana cost three or less to the battlefield. So we'd be recurring a Yara, we'd be recurring uh, Tir Temeret, and Yarok's Fen Lurker, and if Murderous Rider happens to be in your graveyard, you can get that back too, so that's neat. Uh, then, of course, we have Gary, um, who's doing the devotion. That's the win condition, right? Um, the main win condition. Um, and then there's just 22 swamps, two fabled passages to wi uh, whittle the deck down. Yes, it's mono black, uh, so I'm always finding a swamp, but um, what I'm doing here is I'm making the deck smaller by removing basic lands so that I can draw the cards that I really need to be drawing versus drawing lands in the late game. So that is the deck. Uh, so what now we're going to do is play a couple best of one standard games with the deck and you can see what Mono Black Devotion looks like in the current standard environment. Um, so let's get right to that and uh, 
have some fun. Okay, so this is Mono Black Devotion. Um, I have made a small change to the deck since the little thing I just talked about. I removed one copy of Ritual of Suit, so I only have two now, and I have replaced that copy of Ritual of Suit with um, Erebos, um, the big black god dude. So let's see how Erebos plays. Um, I'm excited to have a beater and a source of card draw. So let's see how it goes. So we have uh, Forever Young, Fre blah, 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 Fenlurker, Foreboding Fruit, Underworld Dreams, Ritual of Suit. We have the Swamps to make a turn three Underworld Dreams, which is the Underworld Dream, if, if it, as it were. Um, so we have Lurkered them. They have exiled a mountain from their hand, but they have another mountain waiting in the wings. No other cards to play. This is good. We've drawn Gary, which is very, very nice. So we are going to play the Underworld Dreams, get that chip damage in early. They are in green, so they can deal with enchantments. Um, they are going to kill my Fen Lurker, so I can't do the damages early on with the Fen Lurker. Um, Underworld Dreams, they take one damage. And there it is, Bone Crusher Giant. We've drawn a mountain, a swamp, so we can Ritual of Suit should we choose to do so. Um, but what I would like to do is I'm going to fruit myself. I love saying that. I'm going to fruit myself, lose two life, draw two cards, make a fruit, a food. And we've drawn Revenge of Ravens. This is nice. What I'm hoping they're going to do now is play another small creature or two, and the next turn I can untap Ritual of Suit. There it is. Gruel, Spellbreaker. This is going to hurt a lot. We're going to take seven damage. Oh, Rhyme Rock Knight. We're going to take nine damage, putting us at nine life. Unfortunate. But we're at double Gary, which is cool. So let's go for the Ritual of Suit. Get that going. Draw a card. Lose a life. Now, our plan next turn is to play a Gary. They will lose five life. We will gain five life. And then we'll have a sweet 2-4 blocker to deal with this Rim Rock Knight. Uh, so let's slam that first Gary. We need the life, 100%. We are at 9. Here it comes, Gary. Lose 5, gain 5. The tables are slowly but surely turning. Next turn we have a couple options. We can slam another Gary for 7, or we can start playing some of our goofy enchantments like Ill-Gotten Gains and Revenge of Ravens. Ooh, ouch. Let's see what happens next. So we have drawn a Fenlurker. I think the play here is Revenge of Ravens, and then next turn we play another Gary. Alternatively, what I could have done is played Fenlurker and popped my food, and then had a blocker here. But I'm, I'm pretty happy with this. They're moving to combat. Um, oh, oh. Ouch. Do they have another one? They do. Yeah, there it is. Ow. That's unfortunate. So we have lost this game. Let's move on to another game, because this one was super fast. So last game, um, we did pretty well in terms of what we drew. Um, our opponent was just a little bit too fast and kind of had the right answers to deal with what we were putting down. So let's see how the deck plays in a new game with a new opponent with a new deck. Uh, awesome. Four lands. Timmy, Erebos, and Ill-Gotten Inheritance. We will keep this seven for sure. Underworld Dreams. So this is nice. We can go turn two Timmy, turn three Dreams, and then turn four, we can play a live Erebos, or we can play Ill-Gotten Inheritance. Um, this thing lets them scry two, and then we'll see what it does on the next turn. So we play our Timmy, we pass the turn, their Saga ticks up one counter, they choose a card name, which will be displayed right here under their life total when they've chosen it. Overwhelmed Apprentice. We are playing against Mel. So they're going to have counter magic, um, so I think what we want to do is I don't want the Underworld Dreams to go uh, just get countered. So I'm going to attack for two, try to bait removal. It did not work. 
I'm going to play a Yara um, in anticipation of a counter spell. There it is. Okay. Um, they will likely have another counter spell next turn unless they tap out. So now their saga ticks up again. When they cast a spell with the chosen name, which is Overwhelmed Apprentice, um, they draw two cards. So they're going to cast their Apprentice, draw two cards, and they have three untapped mana and five cards in hand. This mills me two and it ETBs. Uh, so this is really unfortunate. Again, I need to bait that counter spell. And I think the way to do that is to play Ill-Gotten Inheritance. If it resolves, um, my plan is being set into action. If it is countered, then it's countered. And now next turn, hopefully, I am, uh, I'm able to do something a little more interesting, like Underworld Dreams or Erebos. So let's just get in there for two, pass the turn. Every little attack counts with this deck. Um, the more damage you can get in, the closer you are to the end game. And then their final saga thing, look at the top card of each player's library. So they're going to play Vantress Gargoyle. It is not currently live, but as far as I know, it can still block. Yeah, it can still block, so that's a little frightening. Um, so what we're going to do now is we are going to play the Underworld Dreams, and it is going to get countered, or is it going to resolve? We'll find out. I'm, dis I'm expecting a counter spell. There it is. Counter target spell. Player mills three. Boop, boop, boop. I have milled Double Swamp, Murderous Rider. This is incredibly unfortunate. Everything I am doing is being countered, and they are slowly milling me as we go. Another minimized prophecy. So, first turn, scry two. Just let them scry it out. Zero top, two on the bottom. And they come in for five because now their Ventress Gargoyle is alive and well. Ouch. Gary. Okay. We've got the Gary now, which is nice. Um, I think I want mana for Murderous Rider, though. Um, if I can get them to tap out on their turn to counter the Murderous Rider, then I am free to play something of my own that is threatening. Choose a card name. Let's see what they choose. Maybe they'll choose a counter spell, and then I'll just know they have a counter spell. Lockmere Serpent. Oh, friggity diggity doodles. Don't want to deal with that. Let's go for the Murderous Rider, as previously discussed. Slay the Gargoyle, or it'll see a counter spell. Uh, that remains to be seen. There it is. Sinister Sabotage. So now they only have mana for Quench, which means on my turn... Um, Assuming I draw a land, I can safely play Erebos, but that is the extent of what I can do. Underworld Dreams, let's go for that. Um, though I think this is a lost cause at this point. We'll see. They're looking at their hand like, all I have is Quench, why? Um, if I can resolve a Gary next turn, I'm in a good spot. I did not attack, I want to keep it open to block the Apprentice. Yep. The chosen card, by the way, was Lockmere Serpent, just as a reminder. So they're not going to attack with the Apprentice. That's fine. I'm going to take five damage here. Now, they have two cards in hand. One of them, I'm quite certain, is Quench. Uh, but I think I have to go for Gary or just lose here. So here it comes. Grey Merchant of Asphodel and Quench. There it is. So we have lost this game. It is all over for us. Got quenched, homie. Alrighty. What do we got here? Three lands, Fenlurker, Ayara, Foreboding Fruit, and Underworld Dreams. That's pretty cool. Now, since the deck doesn't do... Excuse me. Since the deck doesn't do anything on turn one, we can play this Fabled Passage um, and crack it and have a tap land, and it's really not a big deal. They've taken a mulligan down to six. Um, we'll see if that gives us a win. All right, so they are got some blue and some green. 
I hate seeing those two colors. So, we're gonna play Fabled Passage, but we're not gonna crack it just now, and I'll tell you why. If they see Fabled Passage, they have no idea what we're doing. They don't know what color we're in at all. Um, so I can crack the Fabled Passage on the end of their turn, get the Swamp, and then they know we're gonna, then they know we're playing Mono Black. But sometimes the thing you do during turn one, um, affects what your opponent does during turn one. So by giving them as little information as possible, okay, there we have it, uh, that is the game. By giving them as little information as possible about um, which colors I'm playing, um, I can sort of sculpt their turn because they're going to make decisions based on what I'm doing, and if they see a swamp, they might uh, assume I'm mono black or something similar and act accordingly, so we played a generic opening turn. And I'm including this segment because it's good information. Let's go to the next game. All right, we're going to do one more game with mono black devotion, see how it goes. Um, I keep starting recording games, and then like 10 minutes in, the game is really boring and going nowhere, and then I turn off the recording, and then I win. Uh, so this one, we're just going to stick it out, and uh, hopefully the game isn't a boring game, and we have a nice little game here. Oh good, turn one cat. This is going to be a poop fest. So let's play, um, let's play our Fen Lurker. Make them exile a card from their hand, a Yara. I've considered putting the Cauldron Kitty combo in this deck, but then I'm like, no, I refuse to play Cauldron Kitty. I won't do it. So let's go for Underworld Dreams here. I don't expect they'll have too many ways to interact with it, and then we can start attacking in return. Um, hopefully this will do some good stuff. We do have a Gary in our hand, and we have another Swamp, so we can slowly work our way up to Gary, and in the meantime, we will build up our Devotion. Ayara. Another Gary. So we are going to play our second copy of Fen Lurker. Hopefully exile something nice from their hand. And if all goes well, next turn we'll draw a Swamp. If my luck continues the way it has been going, I will draw not a Swamp. So let's see what they have in store for us. Swamp. Erebos. Active Erebos. That's frightening. Uh, no blocks. We will take the damage. All of it. Oh, a Swamp! Awesome. So what we're going to do here is play Gary. And that is many devotion. They lose nine, we gain nine. And there will be no attacks. And then next turn, we can swing for eleven with a Gary. So they're going to come in for 5 with Erebos. We are totally A-OK -okay with this. Hmm. What will they do? What will they do? I'm hoping they play something and use that mana. Oh no, my other Gary is going to get exiled right now. Fiddlesticks. That's unfortunate. I have drawn another Underworld Dreams, though, so we will play that, and then they'll start taking two damage for every card that they draw. Uh, this is really nice. We've effectively shut down their Ayara situation. They can't be, um, can't be sacking dudes to Ayara to draw a card. Underworld Dreams times two. Take two damage when you draw a card. Bum, 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 bum. I'm ridiculous. Look at all this damage I'm about to not take. Five of it. Um, I think I'll chump. Why not? No, you know what? Let's take the five damage. Next turn, we'll Murderous Rider, Ayara, and then this thing will no longer be a creature. Ouch. But now I want to save Murderous Rider for... Uh, for their murderous rider. Let's see what happens here. They're at one life. They can't win. They have effectively conceded. There it is. Okay, game's over. Thanks for watching. So there you have it. That was Mono Black Devotion. Um, I don't find the deck 
performing particularly well. I could also be not playing the deck particularly well. The, could, the fault could lie with me. Um, my friend who put together her version of the list, she's actually having um, a much better time with it than I am. She's being very, very successful with it. Me? Not so much. That's okay, though. Um, I'm probably going to go back to Grixis because that's where I'm the most comfortable, obviously. Um, so thank you so much for watching. Uh, I am here twice a week doing Magic and Pokemon, and then I do Twitch very, very rarely these days, but it exists. And then you can find me on Twitter and Instagram, all under the name Burp Grixis School 15 Thank you so much for watching. Have a beautiful day, and I'll catch you on Thursday with some Pokemon Go.